Hearing loss actually affects many people and it affects people from the age of zero all the way through till elderly. Throughout life we may come across hearing loss for different reasons and it's usually relatives, friends and family that tell us that there may be a problem with our hearing and so often it takes a while for us to um, acknowledge it that we just don't hear our partners, our children, when there's a background sound of television, simple things or some noise in the kitchen. And by the time that it's got to the stage, often in the workplace or otherwise, whether in a restaurant perhaps, that you may feel actually, yes, I'm not able to have a conversation well and I'm missing out on things. You're starting to adapt your life around the hearing loss. And that's often when people come to us. If you're thinking about having a hearing test, I would suggest the mere fact that you're thinking about it, you should have a hearing test. It's 15 minutes of your time. It doesn't always mean that suddenly you're going to need hearing aids. And I think that's really important. It's a huge leap from just having a screening test to actually having something wrong that we need to do something about. A simple baseline hearing test is called a pureton audiometry. Um, short form, we call it PTA. What we're doing is um, checking the quietest level that an individual can hear. So we're going to do a hearing test now. So what I'm yeah. going to get to do is put some headphones on you. I will give you a button. This one over here. And every time you hear a beep come through, I'm going to ask you to press the button for me. Some sounds will be loud, which are easier to hear. Some of them will be quite faint, so you can just about hear them. There we go. We play different tones and different pictures of sounds, or different frequencies of sounds. We start off with a more moderately loud level, and then we decrease the intensity and we go quieter and quieter. To a point the patient tells us, okay, this is the quietest I can hear, I can't hear any further than this. And then we plot it into a graph across different frequencies or pictures of sound. So this is your right ear, the red circles, and the blue crosses are your left ear, okay? Now, anything between minus 10 and 20 is what we classify as normal hearing. Okay, so your hearing falls between what we call a moderate to severe hearing loss. So if I put that into context there for you, you can see that normal is right at the top here. We've got a mild hearing loss. And then over here, we can see that you sort of fall between the moderately severe region. Right at the uh, bottom right hand side. Um, am I right in guessing those are the high frequencies? Yeah, exactly. So it's always the high frequencies that get more affected than the low frequencies. So what you'll find with this type of hearing loss, you'll find that in background noise situations, you hear the noise a lot more than speech. I mean, the biggest issue that, that I have um, is in social situations, uh, particularly in restaurants. The, the, the social implications of this um, uh, are enormous. Yes. In noisy situations, hearing aids now have come a long way in terms of technology. It will help pick up the sounds that you're not being able to. So without the hearing aids, you'll struggle a lot more and you're straining a lot more. And it's like you said, it's easier to switch off. But with the hearing aids, you know, you will be able to at least pick up little bit of sounds that's going on, pick up on the speech conversation. We're a comprehensive audiology clinic, which means that we can do tests, you know, um, for complex patients, which could be a pressure test called a tympanometry, and that checks the pressure of the ear and how well the eardrum's moving. So if there's blockages to the ear or, um, you know, any um, perforations to the eardrum that we cannot physically see through what we call an otoscope, then um, the tympanometry will pick it up. If someone comes in for a hearing test because their first initial concern is their hearing, but then we realise actually or identify that something else is going on or it needs a second opinion, and then we can also do an inward referral um, to other specialties. Um, whereas in some cases, if you go to an, an hearing aid clinic on its own, then you know you'd have to be you'd have to wait for a referral. It might have to go through your GP, or you know you'd have to go somewhere else to get another um, second opinion but in this place because it's all one stop everything is available in clinic um, it just makes it a little bit more convenient um, for the patient um, but also reassuring because everyone knows your journey.
a doctor is at hand to discuss the details of that test with you. If there is any abnormality, whether it's on the test, whether it's when we examine the ears and all the audiologists will have a look in your ears before they actually do the test, that you've got somebody at hand to allay your fears, concerns when you receive that piece of paper with the graphs. And to have somebody at hand, i.e. a consultant, I think is really important. It may be something as simple as wax buildup. It may be something as simple as a little bit of inflammation, infections, etc. that all make us have hearing that is poorer than normal, but totally treatable. So consultants are at hand to discuss your every question and concern about your hearing, whether it's normal or slightly abnormal. We're all there to discuss, reassure, and also make a plan. Mm -hmm.